Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about attaching minis to bases. Uh, how do you attach it when you paint your base and your mini separately as I do? Talk about how I do it, how I avoid floating foot syndrome, that kind of thing, as well as some quick tips and tricks as to what you've got going on. So let's start with the, the simpler example here. We'll move this base to the side. This is for a later one. So here's our nice little 25 mil base. Here's our character painted on like a little sticky top like many of us use, something like this. Uh, we'll go ahead and take her off of there. Now, the first thing I'll say about uh, a fig like this, if you're painting on top of something sticky, like let's say you put some putty on top of an old paint bottle or something. Sometimes when you pull up, you get paint still on the bottom of the feet. If you ever have that happening, just take some of your existing blue tack and you literally just pick a piece off and stick this to it, like up against the feet. The blue tack is more adherent to itself than it is to other surfaces. And you'll get a nice clean, uh, nice clean area ready for contact. So now that that's there, we simply just go ahead and, you know, line up the fig, make sure we understand where we want to put it. So in this case, she's going to be something like that. Looks great. Now, how do we get the actual fig attached? Well, I'll tell you what I like to use. And my glue of choice for something like this is Loctite Super Glue, the Ultra Gel Control. Uh, in cases like this where I don't have a pin in the foot, which I'll talk about what happens if you have a pin in the foot in a moment, this stuff is really top notch. However, this bottle is a liar. So if you've ever used this stuff, what's gonna happen is you gotta twist the top, turn it on. This is a brand new one I haven't used yet. And then you squeeze these little side things to get glue out the top. And you'll notice after a very short amount of time, you have to like wrench on this thing and white knuckle it to get any glue out of the top. And finally, you just can't get any more out through this little squeezy mechanism. And you're like, ugh, okay, well, I guess this one's done. And you toss it in the trash. Now, what's actually happening there is you're wasting about 50% of the glue in this tube because this plastic thing is a big old liar. So what I like to do instead, okay, is, and we can, we can still twist it down or whatever. So you could, I could use it normally, but what I do is I take my, my clippers and we actually just grab this bottom plastic piece here and we pull that out. Now, cool note, I would save this thing. This is a neat little thing to stick on terrain. It's like a nice little power tower or something like that. I don't know, it just kind of looks sci-fi-y. So neat piece to save. Now you can see where the tube is actually in there that you're pressing on. And like, obviously the top of this where this is pressing is not at the top of the bottle. So it's clearly gonna miss a whole bunch. And what you do is we just take our clippers, clip the top, or clip the bottom, sorry, kind of pull it apart. Then you gotta be a little careful because if you nick the glue, you're gonna ruin it. So I've only done that once, but there you go. You just put a little cut down at the bottom, it'll snap. And then we just pop it out, get rid of that because that's trash. And now you've got a perfectly valid tube of glue that you will get so much more out of. So just a little tip. Don't wait like this that I have right here. I'll still get tons and tons of glue out of this. This would be completely useless out of that plastic thing. Zero glue would come out of this. And look at how this is all still full of glue. Like that's quite a lot of glue still in here. So, all right, good enough. That's a really important tip that I feel like a lot of people are just wasting their glue and I wanted to make sure that we, we knew about it. So we start out, we just put a little a little dab of this stuff will do you. It's very potent. So we put it on the bottom of each foot. So we get something like that. Then we line them up and press her down. Now in the case of something like this, there's not a lot of space. I know I'm covering her, I'm sorry. I don't really have much choice. There you go. There's not a lot of space where we can have any floating foot syndrome, but I push down nice and hard. Let her sit there for a minute. Make sure if it's stable, if it's not, keep it in place somehow, like with your hand. And then we get a little accelerant. This is just zap -a gap accelerant. Touch a little of that to it. 
It doesn't come in this tiny little bottle. I moved my Zapagap accelerator into that bottle. You can also get it in a spray bottle. I don't tend to like the spray very much because it kind of just goes psh, everywhere, but your mileage may vary. You can get whatever you want. And as it's drying there, which will only take a few seconds, we just push down one more time and we're all set. All locked in, good to go. So, and now you can see she's all based up there. Looks perfectly reasonable. Now, sometimes if your if your fig is down in the uh, in putty like that, you might miss little very bottoms of the foot with paint. That can happen sometime. I will actually make sure I glue them first, let that glue dry, and then I come back in and actually just put a little dirt or something on the bottom of the feet. Because as always, especially figs walking in a dirty uh, landscape like this, this should be dirty feet. So what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of brown paint or something and uh, or a little pigment or anything like that and shove it down there. Good to go. Okay, so she's all set. Perfectly fine. Very attached to the base. No issue. So next up, what happens if you've got figs that have pins in their feet? So this is my Knight of Zeros for my Whirlwind's Edge Army. And uh, the question is, how do you get her on the base? So she has a pin in her foot. The first thing I did was I took this base and I knew I wanted one of her feet on the skulls. So I kind of sized up where that would be and I just match it around as to where you think you're going to need to drill. So when I found a spot that looked like that, I like that just kind of on the top of the skull. Her one foot would be resting on the opposite side. Seems a nice position. I like that. Good, good sort of arrangement of the figure. I then took just a standard pin vise. This is my old one. Uh, I've had this for years and years. You can get these little replacement drill bits because you will snap them a lot. Uh, but I just drilled a little hole right down in there for the pin, which I already did. I'm not going to do that on camera because you don't need to see how I drill, but it's just take your little pin vise. Bada bada ba, done. Now we've got a little hole. Okay. And so then once again, we're going to get out our glue. Now I know this fig is going to be a little problematic. The first thing I'll say is you always want to dry fit it before I get the glue, which I already did off camera. So I slid the the little pin into there. And what happened is it's actually not, see how our foot is up in the air? So I know I have to like bend it down like this and I'll have to stick her on there like that. Uh, and that's mainly because the way that I pinned her, the angle, it doesn't quite match up. Not the biggest deal, we can solve that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little glue yet again. We're gonna put it on her foot there. And we're gonna kind of shove the top of the pin down in the glue, right? That way it gets all coated. And then we're gonna run some right up to the top there. Not a lot, by the way. The key is you don't wanna use too much or it's gonna start like gooping out the sides. And this stuff is really, really strong. You don't need a lot of it to be effective. So, get her foot down in there. Get down, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes they don't wanna behave. Then we're gonna push the other foot down where we've got the glue attached. Okay, I'm gonna hold her right there. And once again, we're gonna get out my, uh, my Zap-A-Gap here, my accelerator. And we're just gonna touch a little bit there and a little bit there. Push that down. Give it a couple seconds. And there we go. Nope, and she popped off. <laughs> That's all right. Let's uh, let's see if we can't fix that. Maybe we might need to go a little stronger here. All right, fine. Fine, lady. This is how you want to play it. We can play it that way. By the way, the zappa gap will still be there. So if like you apply more glue, it'll start drying instantaneously. <laughs> Aha. See, we won. Sometimes we fail the first time, but that's okay. We can come back. And I'll just go in and correct that skull a little bit. Like again, just like I would fix anything. So let's talk about the ways you correct that floating foot syndrome. 
if you've got a situation where you have um, where you have feet that aren't quite matching up to the bottom, like right there, you can kind of see a little gap in her heel. The easiest way I found to do that is I just take a little plastic putty, which this stuff is from Vallejo. You could, you could also use like liquid green stuff or anything that's sort of quick drying. I basically just take a tiny little amount of it out. And it just really kind of works almost no matter what your basing scheme is, because honestly, it's just too small to notice. Like, and it's gonna be underfoot and it's gonna be dark color. So I take a, a little brush and I just kind of shove some of that down in there. Okay. Now, I'll openly admit, if I was just doing an army and I had like 500 figs or something, you know, if I had a unit of 120 and I had the back of a foot slightly raised, I would proceed to not care at all and just move on with your life. It's not worth caring about stuff like that. If it was a competition figure, I would actually absolutely do this. So, the key is once it's done there, that's going to dry in about three minutes. So I'm going to give this just a little bit of time to dry and then I'll come back and we'll finish out exactly and you can see how all these things attach. So back in just a moment. All right, so it's been about five minutes and you can see that's nice and dry. Easy peasy. Then we just uh, basically we're going to grab like it doesn't matter what color your ground is. I mean, if your ground's kind of brown or red, just grab a dark version of whatever that is. You don't need to prime it. You don't need to paint it or, you know, pre anything like that. You just kind of shove some color down there. All right. And that's kind of visible at the moment because it's a little bit more green than everything else around it. Okay. Let's take a little bit of that red I used in there. And we'll add in a little bit of what I used for my highlight color. And we'll just touch the edge of that. And once that dries, it'll pretty much just look like the rest of any dirt. If you want to clean it up even more, what you can do is just kind of let that dry. And then you just do a little dry brush over it, maybe a little wash. Ta-da! It'll fit right in. And again, from a distance, you won't be able to tell at all. Even looking close up, once it's dry, honestly, you won't be able to tell. And I like to do this around all of them because you can see down at the bottom for a foot where there's a little bit of glue. So yet again, same thing. Take a little bit of blue, little or sorry, a little bit of brown, a little bit of black. And we just kind of shove that underneath. Shove that underneath. Gives you two things. One, it ends up making the boots look a little dirty, which is always good because again, dirty boots, very important. And two, it ends up uh, helping the fig blend into its surroundings because you got to let it, just like I always recommend you wash tufts, it keeps the same color on both the fig and the, uh, and the ground. If you've got a piece like this, which she was a little more tricky, right? Where she's attached here to the skull and now you've got this kind of a situation, then what you can do is just maybe grab something a little dark and we can kind of redo maybe like a dark gray like she is here. We'll just kind of redo the bottom of the foot over top of the skull. And we'll grab a little bit of that color we used for the skull itself. And we just kind of hit the top of that. And again, looking at it like that, no one's going to notice. Now, if I was, uh, you know, again, if I was doing it for competition, I'd probably be more careful. But in general, when we're talking about stuff like for an army, you don't need it to be perfect if you want it to be, if that's your thing. If you're very sort of uh, anal about this type of stuff, that's fine. Then you just want to go ahead and darken anything down, go from there, you're good to go. But there you go, you can see how she's basically, unless I like literally flip her upside down where I can see the bottom of her foot and notice what's going on there. 
it's almost impossible to notice. No gap, she covers right up. Put a little more black in there. There we go. Now it just looks like a nice little shadow sitting over the top. And there you go, our figs are attached. So there's all your tricks. Uh, it's pretty easy. So uh, whether you're pinning or whether you're pulling them straight, always dry fit first. Make sure you line them up, you know where your feet are gonna go. I highly recommend something like the uh, like the Loctite uh, Ultra Gel uh, for your glue. Uh, remember, this thing that sits around it uh, is worthless. Get rid of this pretty much right away. That way you don't waste glue. This is much smaller, much easier to store, and much more controllable. Uh, put as little glue on as you can. It is very powerful. It will make, it will stick regardless. Put the glue on, set them in place, then we use a little accelerant to lock them in. If we need to cover any gap, any floating foot syndrome, something like a quick drying plastic putty, perfect putty, liquid green stuff, anything like that is gonna be your goal. And if you've got a pin, again, make sure that you set them up correctly before you, uh, before you pin them, that is to say, fit it in a place, figure out exactly where you want it to go, so on and so forth. Dry fit with the pin uh, after you drill a nice hole with your pin vise and get it down in there. But then once again, both of these nice and set, no issue. They're locked on, they're ready to go. Two more characters ready to fight for Whirlwind's Edge and for the Cities of Sigmar. So uh, with that being said, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, hey, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions you'd like answered, drop those down in the comments below. If you've got suggestions for future topics, feel free to drop those down as well. Uh, but as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.